Today I am going to be preparing a standard emulsion using our Organic Cream and Lotion Cosmetic Chemistry Kit. These kits are available online as a complete package and will make at least 200 grams of organic cream or lotion. You may also be viewing this video as part of your studies with us on how to make a basic emulsion. Before using any raw materials, please make sure you have familiarised yourself with the associated NSDS to ensure safe use. We're going to start first of all by measuring out the different phases. When creating an emulsion, the entire principle of an emulsion is to mix oil and water phases which would not normally be miscible in each other. So I've already measured out our water phase. Uh, I'll now be measuring out our slurry phase and in this step this will be to hydrate a gum easily and effectively. I will then be measuring out the oil phase and showing you the emulsion step. As part of this video today, I just want to run you through some basic stirring equipment because it will depend on what you have access to as to the type of equipment you'll be using. At the most basic level, we have whisks. So even if you only have access to standard kitchen equipment, you need your whisks, you'll need some stainless steel bowls, you'll need scales and heating elements. You may also have access to a stick blender. I'm not going to use this today simply because I want to show you how easy it is to prepare an emulsion just using a whisk. If you have access to more advanced laboratory equipment, you may be using an electric homogenizer. These are preferred choices of equipment, but you don't need to use this type of equipment when preparing small lab samples. So again, I'm going to be using basic whisk today to show you just how easy it is to create an emulsion even without advanced scientific equipment. So, I've started by measuring out our water phase already. I'm now going to prepare uh, our gum slurry. Now, I'm using a slurry method to hydrate the gum by putting the gum into glycerin. This enables a gradual hydration of the gum and avoids potential fish eyes or clumps of gum forming in our finished product. So you'll need to have your formulation handy. We provide the formulation with the organic cream and lotion kit. Or of course, if you are studying with us, you will know how to formulate or you can use one of our formulation guides. Again, I'm just using basic equipment here to show you how easy it is to prepare even if you don't have advanced laboratory equipment. So here is our glycerin and our gum. I'm first of all slurrying this. to create a, a pasty type preparation and this just helps hydrate the gum more evenly so to avoid fish eyes or clumps of gum in the product. Now when adding the slurry make sure you are stirring constantly. This also helps avoid any clumps from forming. And you would want to get yourself a nylon spatula like this one that's chemical and heat resistant. You can get this from most kitchen suppliers. These are very useful to get all traces of product out of bowls. So now you can see how evenly that has hydrated in my bowl. It's thickened up my water phase. Using a gum helps stabilize your emulsion for a better shelf life. But you need to make sure it's hydrated evenly and effectively to get that result. That's my water phase ready. I'm now going to measure out my oil phase. And again, this will vary depending on your exact formulation. In this formulation, we are using a combination of an anionic emulsifier, a 
high HLB non-ionic emulsifier blend. Some lipids. And this is a, a natural oil we're using here because this is an organic cream. So this is actually an organic vegetable oil. I'm using another organic lipid here. This is actually organic coconut oil. As part of the organic kit, we've also included some shea butter. I'm using some natural preservative as well. In this case, this particular preservative gets added partially to the water, which I've already done, and partially to the oil phases. Now, I need to heat both phases. When you're first starting out, you will need to measure the temperatures of both of your bowls. I prefer to use stainless steel bowls because there's less breakage in the lab area. And if you're manufacturing product on a commercial scale, you will upgrade to stainless steel vats. So the heat distribution through a stainless steel bowl is much more like a stainless steel vat than when using glass. One of the biggest reasons though when you are starting to formulate from home is it helps avoid breakage to use stainless steel instead of glass. So now I'm heating both phases. In this particular formula we're heating to above 75 degrees. Now you would use a temperature probe to check the temperatures and as you become more and more experienced, you will be able to tell when your formulas have reached the right temperature. Initially though, you must use a temperature probe, otherwise you could be overheating your water or overheating your oil phase, and both will affect the outcomes of your product. I've used a combination of anionic emulsifier and non-ionic emulsifier with a high HLB and a non-ionic emulsifier blend because this will help us achieve the most stable type of emulsion. With organic formulations, of course, it's usually harder to stabilize the emulsion. So that and the combination of the gum in our water phase will help us achieve the best possible stability. Now when you're first starting out, again, you'll need to use a temperature probe, but through experience, I know these phases are ready to be mixed. You'll need to keep stirring throughout the emulsion step, and if you have a stick blender or a lab homogenizer, this is much easier to do as you've, you've already got that stirring taken care of, but again, I'm showing you using the most basic equipment so you can see how easy it is to prepare an emulsion at home. So now I've formed my emulsion. I am still stirring to ensure that I've thoroughly mixed my oil and water phases along with the emulsifiers. At the moment it's still quite warm, still quite hot actually. And that's why it's still very liquid. I need to allow this to get below 40 degrees before I can add any fragrances. And specifically in this formulation, we need to add antioxidants. We need to add antioxidants whenever a natural lipid or essential oil is used. Otherwise, you will get oxidation, which could cause discoloration and off notes in your finished product. 
but I need to allow this to get below 40 degrees before I add those. You'll see I'm still mixing while it cools. This is important to help hold the phases together. And you'll also see as it cools, it is starting to get thicker and more viscous. Full viscosity for this cream, we won't know until at least tomorrow. It will need to set overnight for us to be able to properly evaluate the true viscosity of this cream. And this particular formula I'm preparing, and that which comes with the kit, is a beautiful, luxurious cream finish. But again, today, the day I'm mixing it, it actually still looks reasonably runny. But if you're preparing this at home and this is your first emulsion, this is your first kit you've ever used, don't panic if it looks a little runny today, it will definitely be more viscous and be more nourishing by tomorrow. Now I'd normally check the temperature um, before adding the final step. Uh, in this case, I'm not simply because I'm trying to compact this all into a reasonably short instructional video. I would now add my antioxidant and then check the pH. Now, in the formulas we've provided as part of the organic cream and lotion kit, we've already checked to make sure they're going to be pH balanced to suit your skin. So if you're just buying the basic kit, you won't need to worry about that because we've checked to make sure that the formulations we've provided are pH compatible with your skin at around 5.5. If you're formulating your own products or studying uh, one of our diplomas or short courses on formulation, you would now need to adjust your pH to be compatible with the skin. So I hope that you can now see just how easy it is to prepare an emulsion even with very basic equipment, it's time for you to now get in the lab or your kitchen and prepare your own emulsion.